In this video, let's find out the magnetic field produced by a current carrying conductor. So here is the current carrying conductor carrying a current upwards and the current is I amperes as you can see and we imagine that the conductor is divided into a number of small conductors, elemental conductors and you take one such conductor of length dl as you can see here and we want to find the magnetic field at a point B which is our distance away from this tiny conductor. So the current flowing through the conductor is I. The distance of the conductor from the point P is R. And the angle made by the conductor with the line joining it to the point. So we're talking about this angle. Let it be theta. Okay, so those are the variables. And we're going to use what's called the Bio and Sawa law, according to which the small magnetic field dB is mu naught by 4 pi I dL cross R by R squared. Mu naught by 4 pi I by R squared dL cross R. And here, mu naught is the permeability of free space. Mu naught is 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7. So that's mu naught here. I is the current flowing through the conductor. R is the distance of the point where we want to find the magnetic field. And this represents a cross product. Now, when you look at the cross product, you know that the direction of DL is the same as the direction of I. And then you have R this way. So we are moving from DL to R. So when you take the cross product DL with R, you're actually moving from DL to R. So using the right hand rule, if we move this way, which is towards the tip of the fingers, then we know that the magnetic field is going to be into the screen. It's going to be into the screen by the right hand rule. Okay. And DL cross R can also be written as DL sine theta. Okay, so we're going to write it that way. Mu naught I by 4 pi R squared. And instead of DL cross R, we will write it as DL sine theta. Remember, R is just a unit vector. Its magnitude is 1. So this is Bio and Sawat's law. Now we can use this law in order to find the magnetic field due to a straight conductor. That's what we're going to do next. So here is the straight conductor carrying current I amperes. This is the point P, A distance away, at which we want to find the magnetic field. And since we're going to use Bio and Sawat's law, we imagine that this conductor is divided into a number of small conductors and we consider one such tiny conductor here whose length is dl so that's the conductor and we join the two ends of that tiny conductor to the point p as you can see this angle is theta so we have all the variables and According to, so that's the distance R again, according to Bio and Sawat's law, dP, dB is mu naught by 4 pi I dL sine theta by R squared. Or dL cross R. So you can write it in both ways. I'm going to write both. So we can either put it as a cross product like that, or we can write it as dl sine theta well I also want you to notice once again that according to the right hand rule since we are moving this way the magnetic field at this point P is into the screen 
and that's represented by an X. So the magnetic field is into the screen perpendicular to it. All right, so this can also be written as uh, mu naught by four pi I dl sine theta by R squared. Where you know where theta is, isn't it? So let's call this AB, the, the tiny conductor is AB. And I've drawn a perpendicular from B to AP. So BC is the perpendicular. So you have that right angle triangle here, which I'm drawing again, same right angle triangle. ABC, this angle is theta. And this is DL. Okay. Let's call this angle alpha. So this tiny this angle here is alpha. It's actually, okay. That's d alpha. This tiny angle is d alpha, while this angle is alpha. So d alpha is a small change in this angle alpha. Okay, so now you see a sector here. See, and by the definition of angle, when the angle is in radians, we know that the length of the arc BC, which can be taken as an arc, because D alpha is small, this should be equal to radius times the angle. So the length of the arc BC is the radius multiplied by the small angle. Okay, BC is R D alpha. But from this right angle triangle, we can write BC in another way from this right angle triangle. If you look carefully, you see that sine theta is BC by DL, which means BC is DL times sine theta. So BC by DL is sine theta, or BC is DL times sine theta. So we have two expressions for BC, and now we can, instead of a DL sine theta, we can actually write R D alpha. Okay, so where we have D L sine theta, I've written R D alpha. The R and the square there gets canceled. And so we have an R in the denominator. But again, when you look at this right angle triangle, see this right angle triangle here? In this triangle, cosine of alpha, is A by R. Cosine of alpha is A by R, from which R is A by cosine alpha. So now we can substitute for this R. In place of this R, we can write A by cosine alpha. Let's do that. So now that becomes DB is mu naught by four pi, okay? I by A and the cosine alpha goes to the top and you have cosine alpha D alpha. If that is dB, then by integration you can find the total magnetic field due to the, the entire conductor. Because then we would consider the currents flowing through each tiny conductor. So integrate to find out the total magnetic field here due to all the conductors. That means the current through the entire length. So before we do that, uh, you can uh, see that this angle is alpha one, this is alpha two. So what I've done is, I've joined that point P to the ends of the conductor. I call this angle alpha one, and the angle to this side is alpha 2. So you have alpha 1 and alpha 2. And B is equal to mu naught I by 4 pi A. All those are constants that are taken out. And then you have integral cosine alpha D alpha. And from limits negative alpha 2 to positive alpha 1. Now, this is negative because we're moving in the 
counterclockwise direction so you're going to the negative side so that's why it's negative alpha 2 but here we're going upward so it's positive alpha 1. So when you integrate that again v naught i by 4 pi a are all constants integral cosine alpha d alpha gives you sine alpha and then the limits and when you substitute the limits you're going to get sine alpha 1 minus of minus sine alpha 2 which makes it plus sine alpha 2. So finally you get sine alpha 1 plus sine alpha 2. So that's the formula to find the magnetic field due to a current flowing through a conductor. Okay? So all we need to know is the current flowing the distance of the point and we need to know the two angles alpha 1 and alpha 2 which are the angles made or subtended at the ends of the conductor. But here is a special case. What if it's an infinitely long conductor? What if it's infinite? Then what happens to alpha 1? Alpha 1 keeps on increasing and becomes 90 degrees. The same thing happens to alpha 2 also becomes 90 degrees. So if the conductor is infinitely long, both alpha 1 and alpha 2 are 90 degrees. And we know sine 90 is 1. So now you have 1 plus 1, you have 2 inside. And then that 2 will get cancelled with this 4. So if it's an infinitely long straight conductor carrying current, then you see that the formula becomes much simpler and that's because both alpha 1 and alpha 2 become 90 degrees and you have sine 90 is 1. So 1 plus 1 is 2 again. And uh, so you're going to get a 2 in the denominator. So that's the formula for magnetic field due to a straight conductor, infinitely long straight conductor carrying current. All right, so... This can be used in working out problems. So here I have a problem. All right, here is the problem. 10 amperes flow through a square loop where each side is 20 centimeters in length. At each corner of the loop is a 0.01 centimeter segment, really small, that connects the longer wires as shown. Calculate the magnetic, the magnitude of the magnetic field at the center of the loop. So the diagram is given. So that's the square loop carrying currents. And because of the direction of the flow of current and by the application of the right hand rule, when you hold it like this, you can see that the thumb comes out of the screen. And that's represented by the tip of an arrow. That means the magnetic field is perpendicular to the screen and coming out of it. Okay, and we got to find out how much that field is. Now the current is 10 ampere. Let's join that to the two ends of that segment. And so because it's a square, this angle, both of these angles are going to be 45 degrees. And then we know that this is going to be what, 10 centimeters? Yeah, half of the side and then directly apply it under the formula that we got. B is mu naught by 4 pi. I by A sine alpha 1 plus sine alpha 2. But in this case, the angles are both 45. Okay. And uh, mu naught is 4 pi times 10 to the negative 7. That's the permeability of free space. I is 10 ampere. A is 10 centimeters. But in meters, it's 0 0.1 meter. And then when you take sine 45 plus sine 45, you get 1.414. The four pi's get canceled and you get 1.414 times 10 to the negative 5. That is the magnetic field just due to one segment. And 
there are four such segments and the magnetic field produced by each one is going to be out of the screen. Therefore, to find the total magnetic field, just multiply this with four. So four times 1.414 times 10 to the negative five. And that will give us 5.66 times 10 to the negative five Tesla. So here I have explained the Bio and Sawa law, uh, how we can use that to find the magnetic field due to a tiny conductor. From there, we used it to find the magnetic field due to a conductor of a finite length. And then as a special case, the magnetic field due to a conductor of infinite length. And then we worked out a problem. So I hope you understand this. It's a very important topic. So make sure you understand this. We'll see you on the next video. Thank you.